Hello everybody and welcome back to Village Acres. My name is Noelle. Thank you so much for stopping by today. It's going to just be homestead life. What's going on here? Share a little bit of that with you guys and share what food we're making. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, actually, I don't think we're doing lunch. I think we're just doing breakfast and dinner because we're doing more of a brunch uh, before some of the kids go off to work. So let's jump into that. Here is today's breakfast. All right, so this morning we're going to do a Sunday morning breakfast now. I have to either grind some more flour or go to the base up to see if I've got more. So I normally would do four cups of flour, but I'm going to see if I've got three. This is a half cup. So there's one. There's two. No, I've only got about two and a half. So this will be definitely smaller. I'll add... last little bit of our fresh ground wheat as well um, I'm gonna sift all this flour together we're gonna make some biscuits Ash got me two new jams or jellies I mean to try um, when she was in California her boyfriend was stationed there uh, for some training and so she went to go be with him for a week and then they went to Florida for a week. She's already had a very busy uh, summer and she brought me back some jelly she thought looked very different and she wanted me to try them. So, all right, then I'm also going to sift my baking powder. So I got about four teaspoons going in here. That was probably uh, three, maybe three and a half cups of flour. I'm going to do about three fourths teaspoon of salt. Now the very basic in my 1950s Better Homes and Garden cookbook, you guys, is a basic recipe. It makes the best biscuits. It's just your standard biscuits. Very, very good. Use butter instead of shortening if you've got it. It makes your very basic delicious biscuits. But I do like to sift it all because I don't like chunks of flour or baking. Um, powder or when you use baking soda to make soda biscuits I don't like any of that a big chunk of it I'll just make sure it's not gonna have any big chunks but then I'm gonna just take a good chunk of butter and just kind of cut this in there nice cold butter I don't freeze it or anything like that just cut it and put it in chunks I don't want it in my hands too long though because it will um, start to get melty. I also have my cast iron skillet preheating in a 450 degree oven. I like a lot of butter in ours. Lard is very good in biscuits. A lot of times I'll use lard and butter mixed. Um, I'm just crumbling up the butter in here now. And before I add the milk, I didn't think before I put all my flour into here. I don't feel like grinding any right now. So, I am going to um, sprinkle a little bit of this on here. Just so I got it for when I mix the biscuits. So I'm just breaking the butter up, but I still wanted to have some chunks of butter. The secret to getting really fluffy biscuits, though, is not overworking them and to fold them into layers and I'll show you that um, here in just a minute big chunks still in here I said biscuits are really very easy and I add some milk um, stir it in a little bit with this knife I've got mm, probably close to being right don't want it too wet because I don't have a ton of flour And just tiny drop more milk. Alright, 
that'll be perfect. All right, I'm gonna turn this out to our flowered surface. And I'm just gonna kind of form this into a quick little ball. Actually, it's gonna be a hair bit dry. This tiny drop more milk. Um, if you want the actual recipe, I'll try and link that down below for you guys if I remember. I'm really bad about remembering to do that. Okay, and get my rolling pin. Normally you would flower your rolling pin as well. Hopefully we don't stick really bad. And then just fold it like this, kind of just roll it up, spread your little bit of flour, whatever you got left here. <laughs> I'm going to do it about three or four times, alternating the ways in which I do it. You see chunks of butter, that's a wonderful thing, you want chunks of butter. it. So now I'm just going to cut the biscuits out. Try and get this done before the girls go to work. Um, Brooke and Ash work a double today. Turn it down a realize I forgot Ash made um, cookies last night so I didn't have much flour ground or I would have had more flour ready because I got out my big pan thinking I was going to make a lot more biscuits than I am. And then we'll just have one tiny little, bas little biscuit. Very hot cast iron. I like to bump it down to 425 for my biscuits. Throw in a chunk of butter. The more butter, the better is how I feel with biscuits. All right, I'm gonna pop this back in the oven. All right, I'm gonna end up having to grind some flour anyway because I need it to make gravy. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my thing over here on pastry flour and I've got soft white wheat berries right here that I'm gonna be using. Okay, so all you do is you turn your wheat or your grinder on first. Yeah.
then I have flour ready to go. Now I get the big bag of soft wheat. White wheat is $30 from Azure Standard for a 50 pound bag, which gives you 50 pounds flour. Or uh, you can do what I do, which is usually get it when it's on sale and stock up and you can get it even cheaper. Then it's like 20 some dollars. All right, next I'm gonna make the gravy. Now I'm not gonna make a bunch of gravy, but I am gonna make, you know, some. We have the grease from yesterday's bacon. And I'm gonna use that as my grease in here for our gravy. Okay, and then I'm gonna put in some of that flour. for a minute in this grease and then we'll start adding our milk. And pepper. My grandmother always made gravy, and she always did bacon gravy. And I'm just gonna let that cook for just a few minutes. Check on our biscuits, which are looking gorgeous. All right, now I'm gonna add milk. I'm gonna have to get some more milk. More than that. Stir this up. I always make such a mess. more milk to that. Alright. Biscuits are done. Push that down. I'm going to top that with some melted butter. Good buttery biscuits. And then back to her gravy. And just to turn this heat down a little bit this gravy. I'm going to add a little bit more salt. Alright. That's it. The gravy is done. I'm going to move that back and I'm going to quickly fry up some eggs and then I will scramble some eggs and then we'll do some fruit and voila. I like fried eggs with biscuits and gravy. I think Brooke does too. Alright, so then here is breakfast, biscuits and gravy, eggs, and grapefruit. Alright, Charles is going to do this. This is my eggs going to burn. You got to hurry. I'm hurry. <laughs> More people wanted the runny eggs than I thought. Oh, that's really good. The biscuit's perfect. Gravy perfect. Very good. Very good. There you go, folks. They are. They're always mm. the best biscuits. Now, they look a little brown because I added in the whole wheat flour as well because I was running out of the white flour. 
and I didn't grind any wise in the middle of making it. It worked for me. But I still ended up having to get out the grinder and grind. It works. All right, we're gonna go eat. I almost forgot to show the two ba uh, jams, or jellies, I mean, that Ash had brought me back. A raspberry jalapeno jelly and a mango butter. So I'll let you guys know what we think of them. We're gonna try those in just a little bit. That's one of the reasons I made biscuits. All right, now we're gonna do a quick peek and see what Charles is up to. And since it's Saturday, I have to do a lot of the errand running um, mainly for whatever I need from the feed store. Uh, they're not open on Sundays. They're only open till three on Saturdays. So I ran that, but I might take a minute just to show you what a semi-average uh, homesteader haul actually looks like. So you have to ignore the messy barn. But over here, I got six bags of the pine shavings. Now, these large pine shavings should be enough to do, um, probably since it's summer, I won't go as deep in the coop. So probably three will go in the coop. Um, three quarters to one will go in the mobile coop where I've got the dual purpose birds. And then <laughs> back for these ones that are back in the barn stall brooder coop right now. Um, these guys right here are posts that I picked up about $1.99 a piece from Tractor Supply. And I've been running some electric fence line just kind of like from one, you know, pig run to the other or to the cows. And so I'm going to run the above ground electric fence line through those. Over here, um, that is a 50 pound bag of Timothy hay. And that is for the two rabbits we keep indoors. Um, we do keep those rabbits indoors, or we keep the rabbits in general, not just because they're nice pets and the kids really like them, but we do use all of the manure in with the tomato plants, pepper plants, things like that, when I transplant them. So that is definitely kind of dual purpose for us in having the rabbits. Uh, I did need to get some more poultry grit, so I stocked up on that. And then I got this little bag of uh, hen treats. It's vegetables and worms uh, just because, you know, the chickens are locked up. They're not out free ranging. So I thought I'd give them a nice little treat. Also, pelletized bedding. Uh, this pelletized bedding works really well for the rabbits. Doesn't take up much space before and, you know, it's great. So kids really like it. From the feed store, Kalmbach is the brand I've been using, 16%. Uh, protein and I did get eight bags of that so about 400 pounds of chicken feed and I used their pork producer as well as you can see they kind of bag this themselves and make it all on their own um, but that is about another 400 pounds of pork producer so looks like I still have three bags of the pork producer but in the last two weeks or so we went through five bags of the kombok chicken feed so that's why i got eight this time and i'll probably have to go in another couple of weeks to stock up again and i will say i do find it somewhat funny though because as i'm paying for the price of the feed and realizing okay hey i'm dropping 230 dollars for all of this feed for the animals it sounds like it's kind of expensive but then on my drive back i was thinking you know what when was the last time you went to the grocery store and bought 800 pounds worth of food for yourself for $230? I don't think that can happen. So, you know, that kind of perspective, I'm not really worried about the cost of the feed per se, especially considering there is a return on investment for pretty much everything we do. All right, so we finally got some rain, much, much needed rain. So we need to go move the animals while we still can. So I'm gonna film for you guys. Um, we gotta get the animals moved and then we're gonna make some dinner. There's my helper. Recording I'm recording you, yeah. Thank you for helping, he's carrying that. So we have a random little row of corn here. Of course, nothing will come of it because it's a single row, but. We are moving cows first. So we're coming way back here to the back. Well, almost to the back. But I think they can still go another paddock or two back, but we're gonna go move cows. 
Theo's my little helper, and Kate and Charles. Okay. On the top right. They are ready to be moved. <laughs> so we're gonna get them moved first. And then, hold on baby. In a couple days, hopefully to the next week, Miss Daisy is gonna go play at another farm down the road for a few months and come back hopefully with a baby um, so that she can have a spring baby because they are pregnant for nine months. And that takes, they keep them for about two months when you send them off to go to another farm. All right, so we're taking these posts out. dinner so we're gonna start getting that ready another super easy dinner summer dinners I feel like are best super easy <laughs> and you know minimal minimal work and definitely the grill is the way to go so let's start the grill we're gonna do some grilling tonight okay so I've got the chicken here I'm gonna put that on the grill and I just use this Kinder's um, Japanese barbecue and bourbon peach and I just did a mix of that keeping it super super simple we don't really have anywhere fancy to sit normally. We can sit outside <clears throat> on a day like this. Sorry about that. But we have plants everywhere because we're still getting them in the ground. <laughs> it still starts everywhere. So I cut the chicken like this because it was still a little bit frozen. And I want to make sure it cooks through. And I'm just going to put that all on the grill. And then we're going to also pick up some shrimp in the grill. Kate, clean the grill grates for me. 
Well, Ronnie, he's in the pool with the boys. Okay, next I'm gonna be putting on the shrimp after this last bit of chicken is done. And for that, I just use this Cuban blend for the shrimp. And here is some of the chicken. You guys taste divine. All right, so here is our very, very simple dinner tonight. And then I'm gonna make some ice cream after we're done doing the animals. Sorry, now I showed you guys that at kind of out of order because the plan was to do the animals and it started raining. And then it became time for dinner. So we're very grateful for the rain. But we've got some rice, some corn on the cob. That's the end of the corn on the cob we have. There's a bunch of cookies back there. <laughs> I had the veggies. I cut up a pineapple and our chicken and our shrimp. All right, so like here's Charles's plate. I'm gonna have him come be a taste tester for you guys of the chicken and the shrimp. And ignore the pig bucket. <laughs> and um, we're just doing paper plates tonight because I don't feel like doing all the dishes. As you can see, my kitchen is not full of dishes right now, just a couple dishes. And I'm gonna try and keep it that way tonight. I almost forgot sweet tea and lemonade that I made this morning. I didn't show it again because I just showed you guys a couple videos ago. All right, go. Try it. Can I go? I know you're hungry. Mm -hmm. You go for the shrimp first. Mm -hmm. They do still have the tail on them, so watch. Mm. Some of them do. Oh, it's got a little kick. kick. Yeah, it does. It's that Cuban. The boy is good in it. Ooh, it's got a little kick. I put out the lemonade. Mm. You didn't need a cup. You got rice to eat it with. I think it's delicious. Mm. And the chicken's delicious. Mm-hmm. This is like a perfect summer dinner. Now he will only eat of all those veggies, cucumbers, and that's all right. Everybody else will eat the peppers and the peas. Oh, I got you. I set out a tray over there. Of, I was going to say, that's all I got is cucumbers. That's because, are you going to eat the peppers or the peas? No. All right, that's why all you guys <laughs> cucumbers. All right, you guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. We are going to go enjoy our ice cream that is so delicious. And get showered and ready for bed so we'll see you guys tomorrow bye everybody have a great day or night wherever you are and thank you so much for watching